so far I'm not a massive fan of the auto box. Um, I'm not confident as to which gear it's going to be in. So under my right foot right now I have 415 brake horsepower and 391 pound-speed to torque and I'm not massively convinced when it when it kicks in. Because... Yeah, we, wheel spin, wheel spin, yeah that was wheel spin. <laughs> so pulling away from a roundabout with about 10% throttle, massive wheel spin. <laughs> it's a bit jerky from pull away. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to the facelifted 2018 Ford Mustang. Now, as you can tell from that footage, I first drove the Mustang about 18 months ago, and it was a wet day. <laughs> must be something about Mustangs and weather. And to be honest, I wasn't hugely impressed with the car that I drove. It was the automatic, and for me, it was probably more pony than Mustang, if you like your Cockney rhyming slang. However, this facelifted version, not only are the aesthetics changed, and we'll talk about that, the power's been upped, so this now has 444 bhp, about the same amount of torque, but most importantly, this car has a six-speed manual gearbox, which I think is gonna make all the difference. Well, let's see whether this new facelifted Mustang is any good. So the facelift starts for me at the front of the car. These new, uh, slightly narrower uh, front headlamps and new surrounds around the fog lights and new air intakes just make the front of this car look even more aggressive and muscle car-like. We've got these lovely kind of intakes on the bonnet. So I just think the front of the car has been improved a huge amount. Actually, at the back, there's not a huge amount of difference, but let's take a look anyway. So you come around the back of this coupe body form. They do do the convertible version of this as well, but, but it starts for me with these lovely big rear haunches. And when you're driving the car and you look in the rear view mirror, these kind of stick out and you know you're in a car that means business. But the rear of the car isn't that different. The, the light clusters and so on seem different. However, the big, big difference is for the V8 version anyway, you now have quad tailpipes and an active exhaust so you've got an awful lot more noise potential to come out of here um, and it's that big rumbly grumbly v8 kind of noise as well uh, we'll step through all the different modes once we get out on the road but that that quad tailpipe stance for the v8 just just sets the car off really really nicely <laughs> so i asked the guys from hendy for a really nice subtle car this car is finished in Orange Fury, which is a £795 optional extra. There are kind of three different grades of option colour. You've got the standard colours, you've got a, then, a range of colours at around about £500 or so, pounds, and then this is one of the kind of premium colours. Interestingly, apparently one third of all new uplift uh, Mustangs have been ordered in this colour. So if you want something that stands out, great. But if you want to be different from everybody else, maybe don't choose the orange colour. But let's take a jump inside and see what the, the differences are on the interior trim. Bong! <laughs> Bong! <laughs> I hate cars with bongs. So welcome to the inside of the new Mustang. Now there's an awful lot of familiarity in here with the old one for me. You've got some really nice touches. I love the steering wheel, great big Mustang in the middle. Maybe the first big difference is in the infotainment system. So we've got a much bigger touch screen. It's the Ford Sync 3 system. Um, it's got additional features which the old car didn't have like pinch and swipe. And these buttons have been kind of simplified a little bit. Um, 
My only comment with that be, I just don't know whether that sits comfortably in that dashboard. It looks a bit incongruous to me. And then the other big difference is the main instrument cluster, rather than having the old traditional kind of analog dials, is now a TFT screen with a whole range of different options that you can select and different views, which we'll kind of step through as we drive the car. Uh, clearly, the other big difference is this has a manual six-speed transmission. There's an automatic variant. Good news on the automatic, though. That's now a 10-speed. I'm not sure why you need 10 speeds, but anyway, a 10 speed uh, torque converter, typical automatic box, and it does have paddles on the steering wheel so you can shift manually. Clearly, I can't tell you anything about that because I'm not driving it today. But from what I've driven so far, this is a really nice, very slick six speed box. In terms of uh, price and spec, I find this quite interesting. So when I drove this car 18 months ago, the car I drove as spec was about 35 thousand pounds and because of the size of the engine and the power i was willing to forgive certain things about the car because it was it was a relatively cheap car relatively cheap being thirty five thousand pounds this new uplift version um they start from thirty seven thousand pounds but that's with the 2.3 liter eco boost engine and i'm sorry but if you're going to buy a mustang you buy a v8 one for me you know if my, my that would be like buying a you know a ten thousand pound carbon fiber race bike and still having stabilizers on it it just wouldn't make sense to me but you can get them from 37,000 pounds the v8 one they are from 42,000 pounds and i spec one on a configurator this morning and got to just shy of 50,000 quid for example these beautiful recaro seats they look very nice but they are a 1500 pound option they are a must though, although I don't think you can get them heated, which if you want heated seats, you'd have to have the normal ones. So if you do start specking the car, it does go up. Um, the, the bargain of the range seems to be the Bullet Limited Edition, which basically has everything on it. Uh, and that's uh, £47,500, but that's still thirteen or £14,000 more expensive than the car I drove 18 months ago, which I think is quite an uplift in price. So it better be good once you start driving it. Um, uh, just in terms of performance figures, uh, power's been up, so the old car had about 410 horsepower, this has got 444. Uh, power figures are very, very similar, um, so that, that means that the performance is quite similar. I think it's about 0.2 of a second faster to 60, 4.6 seconds to 60, although I think you'd need to have the automatic box to do that, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Uh, it's got you know uh, traction control and launch control and all of the things that you would hope to get you off the line quickly, but it's quite a damn day today so I don't think we're going to be doing that somehow um, and that's pretty much it the only other option and, and we'll maybe talk about this when we get out on the road this car doesn't have it but it is an option and it's one I spec um, on the car that came to 49,000 pounds and it's also on the Mustang uh, bullet limited edition is uh, an option for Magna ride so it's basically um, adaptive suspension and that option is 1600 pounds um, and I would imagine if anybody really wanted uh, to kind of improve and, and up the handling you would probably opt for that but this car does doesn't have it so again I can't I can't comment on what that's like but that pretty much gives you an inside and out tour now let's get it on the road and go and see if it's any good <laughs> road and for the purposes of this review I've stuck it straight into race exhaust mode uh, because I've not got the car for long and the whole point for me about this car is it sounds as raucous as possible and good news compared with the other Mustang I drove it's certainly got even more bite interestingly it's got a it's got a kind of normal sport plus and racetrack mode for the exhaust but it also has a quiet start mode so if you have neighbors that you don't want to wake up and you have to leave for the station early 
maybe you stick it in that and it won't weigh the neighbours up. But first things first, impression wise, the car does sound like it means business. And as I've already mentioned, this six speed gearbox is really nice and notchy, very short throws on it. Um, it so I, I like that a lot. Already, I love the Mustang more than the old automatic one, which was really not very good. Now, I've only driven this car for a very short period of time so far, and one of the things I would say, characteristic-wise, it is just how you would imagine. It's a big 5-litre V8. It's not a quick revving engine at all. So you kind of just have to drive it like that. If you wanted to go down a nice, tight, twisty road in a fast revving engine with a nice manual box, for me, I'd choose something like a Civic Type R. It's not, that's not how you drive this car. It's very torquey. It's kind of very long-legged in the gears. It takes a long time to get to the shift-up point, but so far oh man does this car sound good so from a drive mode point of view this car is reasonably complex using these little kind of aircraft s toggle switches you've got normal then you can go up into sport plus which i've got it in now then there's a race mode then there's a drag strip mode which is basically launch control and then there's also a wet mode a wet mode setting sort of snow and ice and low grip conditions i quite like the kind of aircraft toggles i'm going to stick it in sport plus and then you could also got a three different steering modes and i quite like the sport steering mode oh, down a gear into here because it just firms the steering up a little bit and that sound bloody good for this car. It just firms the steering up a little bit, so they are all a bit complex, but what you can do, and uh, BMW have this with their M cars and so on, and Audi do it too, is you can have basically a my mode, so you can set all the various things up just how you want them, configure that to be your mode, and then when you get in the car, just stick it in my mode, and then everything's set just how you like it. So it's not like you have to go in and toggle through all the menus every time you get in the car. sounds gruff and menacing this car now we're out on a bit more of an open road i can kind of just open the legs a little bit it's certainly a quick car when you look at the speedo but interestingly it doesn't feel that quick i know that's a stupid thing to say when this car's got 440 horsepower but it, it honestly doesn't feel that fast coming into corners it does have really nice feel to the brakes the the first time you put your foot on the brakes there's quite a lot of bite but they seem quite progressive change up I know that's lazy you should look at the gauges but it's quite a cool feature when you let rip in this car it's quite a slow revving car to get up to, up to the red line but boy does it light a fire behind and it just sounds mega and it's not as intimidating as the last one I drove probably because I've got a gearbox and I can actually change the gears and the problem I found with the old auto is it kept changing down and doing things that I wasn't asking it to do. This thing is just, yeah, it's, it's pretty quick. It's not the most delicate, lovely car to drive down a twisty road, but it's a muscle car. You know, it's brilliant in a straight line, compromised slightly by this kind of bumpy old back road in the UK, but it's handling it admirably. And I quite like the gearbox, the brakes are good down another gear it does sound brilliant and then you can just put the power on it's a little bit skippy on the back just sort of it's not quite as composed on these bumps as I'd like it to be but and it's a bit wallowy around the corners this is going around corners Mustangs of old would never do that okay I've taken a brave pill I'm gonna do not 60 three two one I did that 
manually. I decided I wasn't gonna use launch control. I wanted to see if I could do it myself, just with my feet, my feel, and I'm quite pleased with that. Not too much wheel slip, if any, um, and it got off the line pretty sprightly, to be honest. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the kind of driving manners of this car and also living with it. I just need to point out, by the way, I am driving quite spiritedly, but so far I am averaging 11.5 miles per gallon. Which, even the combined cycle of this car is only quoted by Ford in the low 20s. So this isn't a car that you buy if you don't like regular trips to the fuel station. But the auditory pleasure, the driving pleasure that that's giving me, uh, I still think I'd probably stress a lot about 11 and a half miles to the gallon. Um, in terms of, of, of feel, and it just doesn't, for me, I get all the muscle car thing, I get the noise. The, the bit I don't get is it, it just doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel sorted. It doesn't feel as, as, um, as accurate a weapon as a, as a, you know, a really nice fast Mercedes or BMW or Audi. It just has that, that, that panache missing. And I kind of knew it would, but when it was 35 grand, that was one of the things I, I kind of forgave it. Now it's not, now it's high 40s. I just think it needs that, that little bit more fine tuning. It just feels like a real brute of a car. Now, some of you are gonna love that and I, and I get it. But if you are spending this kind of money, I think I just want, I want the edges rounding off a little bit. Um, you know, just the, the feel of it in, in a higher speed, um, flowing kind of back, back row with lots of corners. It just doesn't quite have the panache for me. But <laughs> off the line, in a straight line, when you're driving slowly through a village and you've got that rumbly V8 behind it, it's got all the theatre you'd ever want. And I guess that's that kind of balance that you need to make. very easily. So, what are my final impressions of this facelift Mustang? Well, they're mixed. On the upside, I just think it looks brilliant. Ah, and in the bullet trim, that green, it's just such an iconic car. When I saw it at Festival of Speed, I just thought it looked absolutely brilliant and I would be very tempted by getting it in that trim, that's for sure. Um, in terms of auditory pleasure, a sense of occasion, this car delivers on every level. However, at the price point, I'm just, for me, although the interior is way better than the previous version, and with this manual box, it's a complete game changer. I really didn't like the old automatic box. This manual box is brilliant. But for me, it's just, it's just not quite there. For the money, I would expect a little bit more. Um, and, and I wouldn't, it's just not a car that I would buy. That said, it doesn't mean I don't like it. It's just, it puts a, it, you just drop the gears down and you smash the throttle and I mean, what's not to like about that? Anyway, I have to say a huge thank you to Hendy Ford in Portsmouth yet again. When I was in there recently doing my Focus and my Fiesta ST video, Todd, the, the guy I deal with in there said, look, see that orange Mustang, that's in. Would you like to drive it at some point? I said, oh, absolutely. I just wanna, I want the Mustang to kind of, I wanna give it a second chance. So a huge thank you for letting me have the car for the day. It's, it's been a real pleasure and I've enjoyed every moment. And, and I think it's good sometimes when I drive cars on Petroped that just, that just aren't for me for, for some reason, but I can see why this would be for many, many people. It's such a brilliant car in terms of the emotions it evokes in you. I just think for the price point, I'd want a little bit more for my money. But I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't subscribed to Petroped already, then please do. Don't forget to hit that notification bell for plenty more content to come. And I will see you on the next video, guys. But anyway, you take care. Drive safe.